Okay, today we're going to be looking at that first one minute and 37 seconds of Neil Young's Cortez the Killer. I'm going to attempt to show it to you as close to note for note as possible, having gone through all the tabs online, all the lessons online, all the live performances of Neil's that I can find video of. This is one where the tabs don't agree, lessons don't agree, um, and as you know if you've followed my lessons I don't typically like to do a lesson if there's someone who's already done a good one here. I don't like to be duplicative. Um, and there is a fantastic lesson here. The problem is it's something like 44 minutes long. That said, I strongly encourage you, I couldn't encourage you more to check out this guy's channel and the video in particular about Cortez the Killer, which I will link at the end of this video. His name is Kelly Dean Allen. Look him up, Kelly Dean Allen. Unbelievable in terms of nailing all these classic solos like a true professional. And his teaching is excellent as well. Okay, so this song, uh, the original recording is in double drop D and don't be scared. You don't have to tune down if you don't want to. If you want to play like the recording to get that voice of doom, minor 7 and the D chords, then you do have to tune your 6th string down to D, tune your 1st string down to D as well. That's called double drop D tuning, okay? So the chord progression is very simply uh, an E minor 7, which with your, you know the 7 in E minor is a D, so if you've made your first string D, then your 7 is covered. You're playing your regular E minor shape, but you've got to play the 6th string at the 2nd fret to make that an E because we've tuned it down to D. And so that what's, that's what gives you that... the D to B thing that is so common in this song. It's like the motif. If you're not tuning down, simply play your D note at the third fret, second string, and you can get that same, that same thing going on that way. Okay, the second chord is a D, but in double drop D that provides some interesting options. You can play just the third and second strings of your normal D shape of a D chord and have this massive D5 power chord. D, A, D, A, D, D. And again, that's why Neil tunes down to this because it gives it that huge grunt, right? But what he does is he actually does fret that second fret first string, which in normal tuning is an F sharp, the major third of the D chord, but when we've tuned down, it becomes an E. So you have a, a D sus two, and what he likes to do is go E, D, A. So when you're strumming that, So that's second fret open on the first string, then third string, second fret. And I also noticed that when Neil plays this live, I think he might sometimes do this. So that it's no longer a D5 power chord, it's a full D major triad with the addition of the major third. Your call, your choice. I would sort of mix in both. just to spice it up. The third chord is an A minor, which he plays as an A minor seven, which means the third string is open. That's a G note. So. And then he also has that droning D note on the first string, just kind of ringing out. It rings out over everything. So it's the A minor seven, with the D note added, which you should know in the key of A is your four, so it's sort of like a A minor seven sus four. And he does a lot of this. So D, C, B, G, 
which you could play D, C, B, G, depending on whether you've tuned down your first string or not. I think a lot of times Neil doubles that D note because he likes that. He likes that droning, ringing thing going on there. Hold on. So let's look at the solo, um, the intro solo. We're in the key of E minor. So it's the E minor scale, which is the same as your G major scale, because you remember that E minor is the relative minor in the key of G. And he's really kind of just... He's almost just going up and down the th or third string playing that scale, using the second string a few times, but you know, almost everything's on the third string. Song starts on an E minor chord, so he's playing this kind of quiet stuff, hammering from the D to the E, then playing the B note, so that should look like an E minor chord to you, right? We're over an E minor, that's why it makes sense. Sliding up to that F sharp, which remember is the third in the key of D over the D, D chord. Does some sliding up to the E and picking up that G note, and he's sliding off to the um, open A over the A minor chord, right? So sliding from D. I would just play along with the original. You'll hear these. It's it's not complicated. Again, these notes: E, F sharp, E, B, D, E, open A. He's kind of just noodling meditatively, right? There's another lesson on here where the guy says you have to be angry to play Neil Young and you have to channel Neil's anger. No, no, this is a, this is a lament. This is a song dripping with grief and loss, right? Um, yeah, I'm sure Neil's not happy about the end of this civilization, but um, it is not primarily about anger. The main motif, third string, four to seven. Open, because he doesn't do that live. He goes. He just goes back and forth between the B and D usually. But if you want to play it just like the original, he goes. sliding from the D to the E, just like he did here. Three times back down to the D, and then there's a slight delay between that open G and, and when he hits the A note. He's just like, it's just a feel thing. Neil just does this. You obviously want to have some overdrive. I've got a I've got a, a muff going here. And then back between the B and the A. Slide up to the C. Down to open. And then that's just C, C, C. There's a little timing thing there. D open. And then that open, I obviously don't have the volume of Neil's Tweed Deluxe on 10, but there's some feedback that he lets that ring. And so I just sort of hit some open strings to kind of give it that weird vibey dissonance before he goes. So that's again, climbing that same scale only on the second string. We're gonna go E, G, A, B. That's five, eight, ten, twelve. So, and just, you know, hold that. And then the chord shifts to the D. What's he do? He bars, right? Your A shape of the D chord. some drippy feedback in there too but I think this is sort of what he meant to do um, so you play that chord and then um, eight, 
10 back to 7. He does a lot of that chord live, okay? And then this he does a lot live too. You should recognize that as your A minor shape, right? So we're borrowing that, we're picking up that G note, remember that's the 7, so we've got our A minor 7 there, and he just sort of lets that ring, and then he does, so we've got the G, G, A, E, so you should be picking up a theme that we're using a lot of G's and A's and B's and D's and E's your E minor pentatonic scale in short, right? The two other notes of the E minor scale that are not part of the penta, right? Penta is the five, two more gives you the full scale. Those two other notes are the C and the F sharp, um, which we you know, use sparingly. Mainly it's the E minor pentatonic. Okay, so, And then he's into the chord. So. You can do that or you can bar those three. And then like I said at the beginning, when he hits the D, he goes. So that's two open, two on the third string. As I also said at the beginning, over the A he goes, and then just, he just kind of hits the D some more, which could be the, could be the open first string, before going, which is just sliding from two to four on the third string, and then doing the voice of God, chunk on that uh, E minor 7. Some more. And then he slides up to that 7th position, D of the A shape again, and this time he picks up, he picks up 9, 7 on the first string, 7 on the second string, and then does this same thing over the A minor 7. So again, 7, 5, 5 on the first and second string. So, uh, and then I think he, he just sort of hits that A minor 7th once, and then he just really, really emphasizes the chord thing, and he plays the A minor up there, this is an A5 power chord. And it doesn't matter, when you're only playing the 1 and the 5, it doesn't matter that it's an A minor as opposed to an A major triad, because we're not playing the 3rd, and you should know that the 3rd is what makes the chord major or minor. We're not playing the 3rd, we're just playing A and E. That's the extent of what I played at the beginning. Now, the rest of the song, that's one I really like, but he just kind of slides from that D to the E. And then in one of the live ones, I think it's live rust, he goes, tortures that D to E that way too with a with a hammer on. It's not a lot of bending in this song, but if you're gonna solo over it and do some bending, the two notes that Neil typically bends is the D up to the E, so is this the A note up to the B. It's a lot 
live. He'll noodle down here and then he'll go up to the 12th position, a, uh, E minor pentatonic. <laughs> So again, the D note to the E, just like we did here to here. So that's a little grab bag. That was a lot. But start by playing over the original. And please, again, by all means, check out Kelly Dean Allen. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for your lesson. It's hands down the, the best Neil Young Cortez the Killer lesson ever done. Um, and needs to be watched by everyone. And that rhymed, and on that note, I am going to thank you for joining me as always, and I will see you next time. <laughs>